Christmas. Yeah, can you believe that? It's coming quick. If you need the list, just come see me after. I'll give you my list alphabetically, starting with A. Hey, listen, um, we, we do want to bless you. We want to tell you what a blessing. So we, we were just recounting some stories this morning. They don't even stop just even financially. We just got to talking as a team. All the people that have come through this house in the last year that have been spoken over, prayed over, people that you just don't know. I know it because I'll call you and be like, hey, can you meet with so-and-so? They're just coming into town. I can't tell you how many times those stories happen and happen. Whole teams like circuit riders come through or YWAM comes through and you're able to pray, prophesy, speak over them. And they all say the same stuff. They're like, man, this place feels like our family. That is who you are. So the sweetness of who you are and how you carry this kingdom and give it away makes, makes us, from a leadership part, makes us proud. You're like, man, we're expanding kingdom. All right, so this morning, I told you last week, it's like the 12 days of Christmas, the, all the different gifts. It's like we, we have elders coming at you every, every week through the month of December bringing you gifts of just who they are. Last week, we brought you the gift of Tim. How many of you appreciated the gift of Tim? Mostly, mostly Stacy, but some Tim. This week, uh, we have Travis Arterberry, and I want, if you would, just before he comes up here, I would like um, Travis and Marianne just to stand. I felt like we just needed to honor them uh, this morning, so if you two would just stand, I want to pray for you, but let's just honor these two. around these two go ahead and let's just lay hands on them as a couple uh, just felt like we were supposed to bless them how many of you uh, how many of you been impacted by these two in your life yeah yeah if you're not looking around right now that's about 90 percent of the room Travis and Marianne so we just want to say as part of um, the body of Christ uh, thank you for your life for your years Just for the years of loving Jesus and loving the people that come in your path. Uh, we're thankful for the amount of freedom that's come through your house. Uh, we're thankful that uh, it, you've never said no if anybody's ever even called. God, I thank you for their heart to serve. Lord, I thank you for their heart to give. Jesus, I thank you for what it looks like to be steadfast. God, in a world that just wants quick answers and quick solutions... God, I thank you for a life that just looks like a long, straight path of just following you. I thank you for the safety that's on them, God, that you feel when you're around them. God, we bless them. Lord, as a family, we just say thank you for the gift of Travis and Mary Ann to us, God. God, we're just saying we're thankful for them. Jesus, we pay you, pour out your blessings on them, Lord. On these days, God, on these days, God, put your hand of favor on them. Lord, specifically in these days, Lord, let them recognize, Lord, an increase in your presence over them and on them, God, and the favor that just rests in them. So, God, as a family, we just say we love them and we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome Travis Arterberry up here on the stage. Wow. Well, I am the elder elder. <laughs> yeah. But you zip me, unzip me here, and I'm really young in here. <laughs> well, everybody doing good? Yeah. Yeah. Got your Christmas shopping done? Mm. Yeah, my wife's been burning up the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, my sizes, I think, are the same as last year, so if you know, just, just, just saying, I'm not, <laughs> oh, babe. Well, you know, uh, uh, last couple, three months, uh, uh, Anthony's preached, and 
Sam preached and David preached and they, they gave their testimony. And uh, I don't know, there's something about knowing somebody by the Spirit. It's just, I don't know, it's just a new depth. And uh, I love those guys to begin with, but I don't know, there's something that just really happens whenever you know their heart and know where, where God found them and where, how God pull, pulled them out and, and uh, their journey. And so I th- thought that that's what I would do today. Just, uh, I'm just calling it one man's journey. This is my journey. <laughs> this is where I've been. This is where God found me. And uh, so, uh, you know, the first scripture I'd like to look at is in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, uh, For the love of Christ, Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. You know, we, we generally know each other by the flesh. That's why we know each other. It's, uh, you know, it's a husband or a wife or son or daughter or teacher. Uh, you know, we, we know him as a mechanic or a lawyer or a professor or, or a you know, a worker or something like that. That's the way we, we know him. Whenever we see him, we, that's the way we identify. This is what you do. <laughs> and uh, so the scripture's saying, uh, it's not saying that's wrong. It said you just need to know him by the Spirit. You need to know about your heart. You know, need to know where God found them. And uh, so uh, I want to just give a brief picture of who I am in the flesh. So if you could just put that up there. And that's, that's my family. That's us. <laughs> that's... Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's ten artberries. That's maybe that may be <laughs> you know that may be the limit. I don't know, but that's ten of them right there. And uh, and the one on uh, second from the left, Mary and I went to Fort Smith last night to an engagement party. Wow! Yeah, it was a big surprise for her, and she didn't know it. Well, there we were, right there when it all occurred. So we. It was uh, quite exciting. But uh, this morning, I, what I want to do is just kind of uh, reveal who I am in the Spirit, my journey. And uh, I kinda, I'm just going to start when I was 10. Of course, that was just five years ago. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I never, I never had been to church until uh, I was 10 years old. And uh, it wasn't that our, my family was agnostic or atheist or anything like that. Uh, we we uh, delivered newspapers for a living. And on Sunday morning, it was a Sunday morning delivery. We got up at 2 o'clock. <laughs> we had 2,000 customers. And uh, we drove 175 miles. My dad went one way. My mom went another. And there's four children. And we two went with dad and two went with mom. And we delivered those newspapers. And then when we got home, we had, we had a farm and we... <laughs> Had a hundred hogs we had to take care of. We had cows and we, so many, all that was done. Everybody went to bed. <laughs> you know, it's, and so, but uh, my sister, my older sister, one day she said, we're going to church. So my first visit, oh, I didn't know one thing. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't know, uh, the, all the kids my age was, uh, in my class at school, uh, they seemed to know what was going on, but <laughs> I didn't know. So anyway, whenever I was uh, 11, the next year, I went to a Baptist uh, summer camp. And uh, it was quite an experience, a lot of, ex- a lot of activities, stuff like that. And they had church services uh, two or three times a day, and it was in a tabernacle type thing, sawdust floor, no sides, nothing like that. <laughs> and in that, uh, in one of those meetings, I come under deep conviction. 
and began to weep. And, and they gave an altar call. And I, I remember stepping out into that sawdust aisle. That's all I remember. I don't remember anything down at the front at the altar. I don't remember anybody talking to me. I don't remember praying. I don't remember anything. It's like a, a blank. And uh, I don't know if they just set me down and asked my name. I don't, I don't really know. But it was considered a salvation. And so I was baptized in my church when I got home. And, and I went like that thinking, well, that's, that's it. That's, that's eternal life. That's, that's salvation. But uh, I never did have any peace, really. I, I can't tell you how many times I was coming to conviction. And I'd like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I just don't know. <laughs> But uh, when I was 28, I came to Tech as a professor, and uh, things began to occur. Of course, I had all Wayne and all that bunch. <laughs> I didn't have him in my class, but I had a bunch of those people in my class, and I'm like, I'd never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it was crazy. I mean, uh, after class, I'd hear some of them say, hey, okay, hey, listen, we've got 20 minutes. Let's run over to the, let's run over to the house and let's pray. I'm like, what? You're gonna, you got 20 minutes here and, and you go, you're going to go run and pray for 10 or 15 minutes for your next class? I, I don't know, it's just crazy. Uh, but, I mean, you know, <laughs> I had a student that uh, if, if, when he took a test, if he didn't know uh, the answer, he just right in there, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> it, it was hard to count that wrong, but... Uh, but I mean, I see, I see in, uh, I see in life here that I'm like, I'm not aware of. I mean, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like this. These guys are, are either crazy or they got something I don't have. And uh, I think it was the latter. But uh, when I was 33, uh, we had a, we had a guy from England that was come to preach at First Baptist, and and uh, we had a noon meeting, and we were we were singing a song. And uh, uh, let me put the words up there. This is the song. You may have heard it. Does anybody here want to live forever? Say, I do. Anybody here want to walk on the streets of gold? Say, I do. Anybody here sick and tired of living like you do? Anybody here want a home with love forever? Say, I do. I'm telling you, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. I want that. I want that so bad. So I, I didn't know what to do except maybe start reading my Bible. And so I started reading. I thought, well, I'll start in Matthew. I'll just start there. <laughs> Seemed like a good place to start. And I was going along. I, was, I didn't really much, much understand what I was reading until I got to Matthew 10. And verse 32. Let's put that up there. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter and, uh, 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 and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. I was reading in this Bible right here. And I read those words and I closed it. I said, I don't do that. I knew I loved my wife and I loved my boys more than I love God. That's what I knew. Now that wasn't that wasn't in question. I knew my heart. And I knew I did not love God more than them. And here's what I concluded. Since that's the case, I, there's nothing I can do about that. That's just the way it is. I, I love them more than I love God. I can't do anything about that, so I can't be a Christian. 
I, I didn't know what else to conclude. That's, I can't do it. I can't change. I can't change this. Oh, I tell you. I met a man in the church and told him kind of my dilemma. And he said, well, you just need to pray and receive Christ. So he led me through the prayer of salvation. And he said, uh, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to drive a stake. We're going to drive a stake down here today. Just in the, and let's just drive a stake. And this, this is where you pray. And this is where you... So we did that. But, but let me just say to you, there's more evidence than a stake. I'm telling you, that uh, it, it didn't do anything for me. Well, just shortly after that, I was visiting relatives in, in Texas. Mary and I are both from a small town in Texas. and We, we just lived about, uh, about a mile from each other growing up. I've known her all my life, <laughs> my entire life. And uh, anyway, we were visiting relatives, and my mother had just gotten saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, son, that's a whole brand new species of being right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. You, you're talking about a whirlwind. Oh, my goodness. That woman. Whew. Well, you, you better get, get out of the way, son. I mean, she's coming. Oh, my goodness. And uh, so I'm talking with her, and, she, and so she says, uh, oh, she'd been praying for me, my goodness. She said, she, uh, she said, son, uh, don't you want to speak in tongues? And I said, well, mother, I, I just want whatever God wants for me. If he wants me to speak in tongues, that'd be great. If, if you know, whatever. Oh, man, that was a yes to her. I mean, <laughs> I mean that was an absolute yes. <laughs> so, man, I mean, she's up, she's on the phone, she's talking to her pastor, but I got an appointment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, that, that all took place in just a short order. I had to, so, man, I'm, I'm scheduled to meet with him. That's on a Friday. So I go to, to the church where she went, Pentecostal church, Preacher, uh, he, he kind of went over scriptures with me, and uh, I'm telling you what happened next is absolutely, I'm, it's just, hmm. he laid his hand, hmm. he laid his hands on me and the power of God, I, I'm telling you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm telling you what, it was swirling around me, it was like I'd caught in a hurricane. And his words to me were, Travis, that's the Holy Ghost. Boy, I'm telling you, I didn't know one thing about that. Not one thing that I know. Nothing. Mm. See, I was, my arms were totally up. I was absolutely suspended. The only thing I'd ever experienced in my life that was anywhere close to it, uh, I like to canoe and... Uh, Sometimes we'd get our canoe caught up in the rapids and you get out and try to get that canoe <laughs> unstuck and the wind, the, the waves beating against you. It's, it's the only thing that I'd ever had. Well, I was on Friday. Friday night I didn't sleep. Saturday morning I was scheduled to drive about 50 miles to where I'd gone to school and professor there that I knew we were going to play golf and so I take out early in the morning to drive oh my goodness the convicting power of the spirit whew, just I'd cry so hard I couldn't see I'd, I was crying so much that I could not see the drive so I'd pull off the road and I'd stay there a while and kind of get back together and I'd get back on the road and I'd go another 10 or 20 miles and boom, here I am again. I'm off again. And <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many times that, that took place. And, and then uh, we, I played golf. as miserable. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, I've never experienced misery like that. 
And then uh, I, draw, I start back, and it's the same thing, about 10 miles off, back on the road. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Another 10, 20 miles. I made it back, and I walked in the door. My mother screamed, oh, son, you're under conviction. We've got to get you to the church. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness it all but I mean I, I mean phone calls start being made <laughs> so away I go I go to the church I don't know how in the world I'm telling you the place was just covered with people there to pray for me I, I'm saying there's probably 100 150 people there laying on their face Interceding for me. Hmm. Uh, it was it was confusing. You know, people people around me were praying in tongues. They were laying hands on me. They were done. It was quite a quite a night. Nothing happened. Hmm. So Sunday morning, I go to church. He preaches on repentance. I'd already done it. Mm. I gave the altar call and I'm like, okay, I'll go back down there. And I, I hit that altar. The whole church down praying. I mean, oh my goodness. They, I'm, I'm going to tell you, they ch that church stayed there until probably one or two in the afternoon for me. And... Uh, so I'm there praying, and all at once, I begin to hear the voice of God. I'd never heard it. Never heard it. He took me all the way back to Matthew 10, where I closed the book. I'm back there. And this is what he said. Son, you love your wife more than you love me. That's where I quit. <laughs> And, I, and uh, I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And I'm just in the, in the spirit. I just took my wife and I just put her out on the altar. Took my hands off of her. And then I'd cry so hard and then I'd reach over and get her and pull her back. And then I'd put her out there. Finally, I just left her. And then he said, uh, you love your boys more than you love me. Oh my goodness! The little old tykes, they weren't they weren't very old at the time. I mean, uh, finally, I put them out there, and I, God, I, I just gave them to you. That's all I know to. And then he said, uh, "That PhD that you have doesn't mean anything to me." My wife had given me a ring whenever I graduated. PhD, had a diamond in it, it's right there. So whenever he said that, I just reached over, took it off, put it in my pocket. Never wore it again. And not only that, I went back to the university later and offered my degree back to them. My professor, my major professor, looked at me like, who are you? And what are you doing? I said, well, this is just what I, I just, she said, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. She said, you're one of the best students we've ever had. We're not, we're not going to do that. I said, okay. I talked to a man later, uh, wise man. I said, what, are you, what am I supposed to do? He said, well, he, he said, that's your Roman citizenship. That's what Paul had. He had his Roman citizenship. He pulled his Roman citizenship card whenever he needed it to. He said, that's your Roman citizenship. I said, okay. All right, we'll go. And I'm telling you, I was there and waiting on the Lord. And then I, after I'd given everything that he'd asked of me, I, I heard him, heard this these, this, these words come unto me 
And all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I, ne I didn't really know where that was in the Bible. I don't know that I'd ever read that. Come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It's just so interesting that that's really close to the <laughs> where I quit reading. And whenever I heard those words, I cried out, Jesus, I know you. Hmm. It was like someone took a big bucket of peace and just poured it over me. <sighs> peace. Hmm. Peace. The problem was I didn't speak in tongues. So they told me that I didn't get saved. The interesting thing about it, I went to the Baptist church, I didn't get saved, and they told me I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the Pentecostal church, got saved, and they told me I didn't. <laughs> hmm. But I'm going to tell you, my entire life changed. Entire life changed. I found 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and I said, oh, wow, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And I said, oh, my goodness, that's exactly what, what's happened to me. And uh, I, you know, I just had a uh, new life, absolutely a total new life. My friends, some of my friends said, I don't, I, who are you? What? I went to a party one time, the same party I'd gone to before I saved, I didn't have the same friends. I, I didn't have any new friends. I didn't have any Christian friends, really. But I went to this party, and uh, the woman, the hostess, she stopped the party, and she said, I don't know who this man is. I don't know where Travis Arterbury went, but this is not him. I don't know where he is. I don't know who you are. Now, that's called the transformation of a life. That's what the new birth does to you. You're a new man, new person, new creation. So I had a new life, had a new call. I'm in a church service, had this Bible. The Spirit of God came, and I'm like, I wanted, I wanted to eat this. I wanted to take a bite out of this book. And I said, oh, God, if I can't preach or teach this Bible, I'm going to die. So God put a call in my heart. And I'm, oh my goodness. I've been to eight different countries, 14 mission trips, been around the world, so to speak. But uh, there's new hunger. The gifts begin to emerge. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm like, I'd led my, my academic dean to the Lord. And, uh, I get a phone call at 12 o'clock at night. And it's him. He said, Travis, my student worker's husband has just called. And he and his wife were praying, and she went into a trance. And he wants us to come over. So I get dressed. I go. <laughs> we get over there, and she's sitting on a couch in a trance. He and my dean, they started talking. And I'm standing there and I'm saying, Lord, who do I call? Who do I call? I've got to get somebody to know something. I don't know anything. Who do I call? The Lord said, why do you think I have you here? And I'm like, oh, Lord, no, Lord. I, <laughs> oh, Lord, 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 oh, Lord, Lord, wait, 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 wait. And uh, I walk over in front of this woman. I said, demon of hell. I'm a son of God. I have authority over you. And whoom, she starts going down the couch. She doesn't move a muscle. She goes, whoom, 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 ha, ha. <laughs> and I said, in the name of Jesus, you come out of her. Boom, she goes up in the air like a piece of paper. Boom, and goes in a, in a water over there and knees come up in her chest and she screams and she's, oh, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing here? What's going on? Free, absolutely free. 
Oh, I'm, hmm. oh my goodness. I, I'm telling you what, before I met the Lord, <laughs> that, none of that's going to happen. Hmm. Yes, begin to emerge words of knowledge. I knew things. I don't know. I didn't know how I was supposed to know those. I see things before they would occur. I, I'm like, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> what is this? Hmm. Visions, dreams, healings. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, it says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and true eternal life. That we're in Him, He's in us. That's the true God and true eternal life. The question is, <clears throat> for every one of us, who are we? Who are we? Are we really in the faith? Now, you've got to understand, before all this started, I was a, a deacon in a church. I was a teacher of a Sunday school class. None of that makes you a, a Christian. None of that is what makes gives you eternal life. None of that. Salvation is not a plan. Now there is a plan of salvation, but you don't get saved by a plan. And when a person is saved, they generally pray. But the salvation is not in a prayer. Salvation is in a person. It's in a person. You've got to meet him. You've got to give your life to him. He's got to give his life to you. And when he does, you are going to be a different person. Stephanie, where are you? Why don't you come back? And uh, one of the songs that really impacted me during all this was... Uh, a song that we sing a lot, church. It's called The Savior is Waiting. Don't put the words up there. And these are the words to, to this song. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he has waited for you. And now he's waiting again to see if you will open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. If you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him. And all of your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time. He is waiting for you. And now he's waiting again to see if you'll open the door and let him come in. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. He'll be your Lord. You'll get seated. He'll eat at your table first by your invitation. But then you eat at his table the rest of your life for eternity it's one of the best things you'll ever do I'm telling you he's waiting there's some of you here that need to respond to him. I didn't I never was a hypocrite I just didn't know I didn't know I just didn't know I didn't know so I'd like for us to sing this this hymn Stephanie's going to lead us so why don't we stand uh, altar team we've got to uh, Diane and Bobby and Larry's going to come. And they're going to be here at the front. You know, the, the thing about the Lord, you, 
when he offers the invitation, you need to take it when it's offered. You don't say, well, you know, I'll, I'll do that some other time. I'll do this. Well, <laughs> no, you need to respond when the, when the invitation is given. So if the invitation has been given to you this morning, I encourage you, respond to it. Stephanie, why don't you lead us? The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Just come on down here and talk with one of these if you have any doubt about where you are. Scripture says that this is eternal life, that you would know Him, the one true God. There's nothing like somebody's testimony, is it? There's nothing like that story. So we're going to close, and if you would say, before you, before you leave, if you're listening to the story and you say, I don't know that I know Him and that He knows me. Listen, this, this, is, this is your moment. I just want to tell you, this is your moment. This is why we're here. This is why we're family. This is, this is what we do. So if you're, if you're just not sure, I mean, I heard in that story, I was even convicted, where, where did you stop? So he closed the Bible. There's a hard part that, in his story. And I'm like, God, I don't even want that as a believer. I don't want to be a point where I, what's the last thing that I just told you no? I, mean, I felt like the Lord even took me back. So even that, as, before you leave here, just go back to that spot where you, you decided, I'm going to stop here. So if you don't know him, come. If you're at a point where you're like, yeah, I, I got to a certain point with my walk with Jesus, and I said, no, I, I can't do that. Listen, there's even grace to walk through that in here this morning, I can tell you. I just hear it in a story. I can hear it in the testimony, how good God was just to come back and meet him right back at that spot. It's the way it works, doesn't it? We walk over here a ways, and then he brings us back right back, and we get to choose again. He says, son, I'm going to bring you right back here again. I'm going to give you grace, and here's your shot. Pick this road. So if that's you and you want to do that, just don't leave without doing some business with Jesus. I tell you, the other thing I heard in there that was convicting to me is, who am I praying for like that church was praying for him? Man. I mean, there's a challenge coming for us I'll share with you in January. The Lord's already starting to speak some stuff in here. And it, it's a problem that we're not seeing more people come to faith around us, but it's a more of a problem that it's not bothering me personally, that I'm not seeing it. That's a problem. It's like warm my heart. Like nothing does it like praying for somebody. My heart gets warm and then my mouth starts to open if I can start praying for them. I just get convicted of that. Who am I sitting around like that church was interceding for him? That's amazing. Love that story. Let me just pray for you and bless you for the week and then just come. Like we'll just leave it open. It's, this is why you're here. So Father, I thank you for this story, God. I thank you for... 
God, I thank you for your plan, God, of how you came to us. You don't stop, Lord. I thank you for the grace in this room just to obey you. God, I thank you for grace even over families, Lord, in this season of time, Lord, just to see salvation happen. Lord, we just expect that people are going to say yes to you. Lord, just start changing our expectations, Lord. Where we just we expect, God, that people will want to receive life, God. So I pray you, you would just begin to even change the way we think about the people around us, God, and that, Lord, they want what, what you have. And, Lord, I thank you for grace, Lord, in this season just to see people come to faith. And, Lord, just let the, uh, Lord, let us obey even whenever uh, we can't see the whole rest of the road. I thank you you bring us back to that first step. So, Lord, we just bless the people in here, Lord, and with grace to obey it in Jesus' name. Give somebody a hug. Pray for somebody before you leave if they need it. Come up front. God bless you guys. We'll see you this week.